Okay, let's start this lesson by giving 2D examples of polygons. These are easier to understand and then we can generalize them later to 3D polygons, in which case it becomes a solid or polyhedron. When you think of a 2D polygon, you probably think of simple shapes like these. These are closed curves where the inside and the outsides are clearly defined. Here inside is defined by I and outside is defined by O. However, it's not that simple. If I draw a more complex shape like that one, then deciding what parts are the inside and what parts are the outside of the polygon is possible, even though there are self-intersections in the polygon. But then if I draw more complex shape like that one, we have self-intersection and we can clearly define what is inside from what is outside. But in this case, do we obtain one or four polygons? So the one curve that we draw will actually span, will actually create four separate polygons. So it means that do we have one or four polygons? In GIS, there are international standards that define what a polygon must be. We have, for example, ISO 19107 and also the OGC simple features. Both these standards are aligned and they allow us to define clearly what a polygon is. In short, a polygon must have one exterior boundary that can also be called a ring. Outer ring, you will also hear it. And then this polygon can also have uh, inner rings or inner boundaries. A polygon doesn't need to have any boundaries and it can also have an infinity of inner boundaries. The international standard prescribes how each ring must be represented. For example, a ring uh, mustn't have uh, duplicates and also should be simple, shouldn't have any self-intersection. And the, stand the standard also tells us how rings are allowed to interact with each other. Basically, two rings, that can be the outer and the inner rings, can touch, but only at vertices. They're not allowed to touch uh, along edges. And they're also not allowed to overlap. If we look at the polygon below, this polygon has one outer ring in black, and then we slowly add inner rings that are triangular shapes. These inner rings are all valid because they're simply touching at one vertex, but then if we try to insert one, as is uh, the case now, that overlapped with one, then the polygon would become invalid. There's also one other case that needs to be taken into account is that even if one ring is allowed to touch the outer ring at single points, then the polygon must not become disconnected as it's the case right now. As you can see, the inner ring will actually split the polygon into two separate parts, and this is not allowed. One polygon, according to the international standard, should be one continuous area. The details are given in this set of six assertions that are available in the OGC simple feature specification. And then you can read these assertions in the handout. Now let's look at the definition as found in the international standard ISO 19107 for a solid, which is also called a polyhedron. This definition is a direct generalization of the 2D1 for polygon. As you can see in the uh, image here, a solid must have one exterior boundary. But in the case of a 3D volume or solid, then this exterior boundary is what we call a shell. And in the case here, the solid has one exterior boundary, which is a shell, but also has one interior boundary, which is also a shell. In 2D, the interior boundaries define holes in the polygon, and it's the same idea in 3D. So uh, they define holes, but we call them usually voids or cavities. A shell is a surface that must be watertight, uh, and mathematically speaking, as it's explained in the handout, it's a two-manifold that has no boundary. So it's a closed surface, which uh, is, as I said, watertight or airtight. Shells have to be simple. They're not allowed to self-intersect. And the geometric primitives that are used to build the shell are the polygons that we've seen in 2D, simply that these, just that these polygons are embedded in 3D. You can see on the right hand side a, a slice through, a vertical slice through the volume, and you can see what you would get in this case. This means that, as is the case here, the top surface, which is represented by the top surface of the exterior boundary, which is represented by a polygon, is actually a polygon that has one interior 
boundary. As is the case in two dimensions, the boundaries, in this case shells, are allowed to interact with each other, but only according to certain rules. It's easy to generalize the six assertions of the simple features that you can see here, and then we can know what the rules are in 3D for the interaction between different shells, and that will also lead us to know what is a solid in 3D. The only thing we need to do is to change polygons by solids and to change ring by shells. And also we have to know that what is defined as a hull, we called it so far a cavity or a ring. So if we make all these changes and then we read these rules, then we can see how a solid is supposed to be valid in 3D. To understand these rules, it's better to look at some concrete examples. So if you look at the 12 solids here, you can see if they are valid or not. And you can also see uh, the reason why they are valid or not. But let's go through them one by one. The volume S1 that you can see here is not valid because the surface is not watertight. There's a hole in the top surface. The second one is the same one, but there are other surfaces that are filling that hole, so it makes the solid a valid solid. Notice that the, the first two solids only have one exterior boundary and zero interior boundaries. If we look at the volume at the solid S3, then the volume S3 has three boundaries, one external one, which is the dark gray, and then two internal boundaries, which are two tetrahedra that are located inside uh, the cube. These two tetrahedra are only touching at one point, which means that they do not overlap and their interactions are allowed, which means that this solid S3 is valid. Now, if we look at the solid S4, it's the same idea as the solid S3, but the two tetrahedra, the two inter, uh, interior shells, are actually overlapping, and this is not allowed, which means that the solid is not valid. Now, if we look at the solid S5, the solid S5 is composed of the same exterior shell with one interior shell, which is a tetrahedra. Notice that this tetrahedra is pushed. One face of the tetrahedra is directly coplanar with one of the face, the right face of the external uh, shell, which means that it's not valid. Uh, if we wanted to make that solid valid, we would, we would actually only need one exterior shell, and this exterior shell would have a dent in it. I draw here in 2D how a cross-section would look like. So the valid representation of this solid would be without any interior shell. S6 has only one exterior shell, but it's not valid because there's a dangling piece, so the, the shell is not a valid shell. The volume S7 is actually valid. Uh, it can be conceptually seen as a torus, so it's like it's a donut. So there's uh, only one exterior shell and there's no interior shell, and the exterior shell has several surfaces and there's a genus you can see in the handout what a genus is this uh, solid has a genus of one then the solid s8 is invalid so the same hole in the middle is actually moved to the side of the exterior surface and the exterior surface then that creates a non-manifold case so it means that the red edge that you see here has four uh, incident edges which is not allowed because in a shell uh, shell should have only a maximum of two incident surfaces. Now if we move to the last row, um, we have S9, which is invalid. So S9 is formed by one exterior shell and one interior shell. Uh, but this interior shell is uh, basically disconnecting the interior of the solid. So it means that we end up with two different volumes, one above the pyramid and one under, which is not allowed, so the, so the solid is invalid. Now S10 is an invalid solid because the top surface has a interior ring which is located outside the exterior ring, which means that's not allowed. Um, one important thing to notice is that for a solid to be valid, all its uh, building primitive, so all the surfaces that are used to build it, must be valid. So in this case, since one of the surface is not valid, then the whole solid becomes invalid. And then the last two examples, S11 and S12, notice that these are conceptually 
not conceptually these two are the same topologically speaking so they have the same topology so if we only looked at the topology of these two uh, both the topo both topologies are valid but where it's invalid is that s12 is obtained by simply moving the apex or so the top of the pyramid below the ground of the house let's say if we conceptualize this as a house and the only way to catch this is by doing intersection of surfaces and if we do intersection of surfaces we will notice that four surfaces are actually intersecting with the ground surface of this uh, solid which means that it's also not uh, valid and that makes s12 invalid but s11 is valid Although we only cover solids in this small video, in the handouts, more 3D primitives are explained. According to the 3D standards, we can combine different primitives into either aggregates or composites. So an aggregate, which is a, either a multi-surface or a multi-solid, is simply a container for different primitives of the same dimensionality. So if we have, for example, a multi-solid, it means that in the case here that we have at the bottom, we have three solids and these solids have no topological relationships that are prescribed so it means that they can overlap or be disjoint it doesn't matter so if we have different solids we can simply put them into a multi-solid same idea can be applied for a multi-surface we can also combine different primitive of the same dimensionality into a composite a uh, composite is different in that it enforces topological relationships. The main one is that the different part of a composite uh, cannot overlap. So if you have a composite solid formed of two solids, these solids cannot overlap. And also they are not allowed to be disjoint. While having agreed international definition is very important, having software that allows us to validate one instance of a 3D primitive against that definition is also very important. Val3DT is one such implementation. It's an open source software written in C++, so it's relatively fast, that can take as input several formats. For example, CTJSON, GML, and OBJ files are accepted as input. And it does one thing. So it reads the file and look for all the 3D primitives in that file. All the ISO 19107 3D primitives are supported. And it validates them one by one. And it basically tells you if a primitive is valid or if it's not. And if it's not valid, then uh, it's kind to the user in the sense that it returns an error code. You can see here all the error codes that uh, Val3DT can return. So these error codes are categorized by primitive types, but also by type of input. So if we have, for example, a solid that has one hole in it, then the Val3DT would return that it's invalid, and it would give you an error 302, which is shell not closed, so there's a hole. And it would also go one step further and would give you the location X, Y, Z, of the middle uh, location of that hole. The source code of Val3DT is available on GitHub, but you don't need to compile the source code yourself. You can simply download one of the binary. So if you click on release, you can see that we have binaries for Windows and for Mac OS. So if you download the uh, binary for your operating system, then you can run it directly. Val3DT is a common line interface program only, so it means that you need to use a console or the shell, but it's pretty simple. You simply need to type Val3DT and then run the file that you want to run. So here we're running a CTJSON file of uh, The Hague in the Netherlands. So we have a part of the model in that file. So we basically only need to say Val3DT in the file. And then as you see, uh, every building and every primitive is being validated in the file and then we get a report at the end a summary if we want to get a more in-depth report we can simply use the option uh, dash dash report and then give the path to the report that we want to save and the html report is being saved so as you see here we if we just open the file report.html then we have a browsable report that we can see what an overview of all the errors and we can also click to see for each object in that case buildings or the terrain we can see which 3d primitives was represent was used to represent that uh, feature and also what are errors are associated to it